This listing behind me has some big problems. It's getting no bookings. We're talking like months of no bookings. The Airbnb bust, the slower than normal slow season, and this listing's complete lack of personality have caused it to go dark on the Airbnb platform. In this video, we're gonna fix that on the super cheap. I've been spending the last couple of weeks trying to find out what makes a property perform on the Airbnb platform now that they updated their algorithm, and I've got a fix for it. In this video, I will show you the steps that I am taking to make this listing pop again, right from scratch, without spending much money, to get back at the front of the algorithm and to get back fully booked. We've got about 10 properties in this place, so I'm gonna try to do multiple at the same time. Strap in, it's gonna be a fun, dense video full of tips that you can use in your own Airbnb property to make your listing improve and to get back to the top of the algorithm just the same. These are some really cool guerrilla marketing hacks. I'm so proud to show you, let's go. So first off, as you can see, this place, it's not nice, it's not special, it doesn't do much, but it was super profitable for a short period of time before summer ended. Now this supports my theory about the Airbnb algorithm, which is that Airbnb has a sliding scale of what they think is acceptable on the platform based on their supply and demand curve. See, winter season, there's less demand. There's too much supply. So they start to curate more of the best of the best in order to protect their best listings on the platform. They stop showing listings there are even mid-quality listings because they want their best properties to stay full enough that those people don't quit. If the bottom of the market quits, Airbnb's cool with that because they don't hold the inventory. They're not at risk of loss with their inventory. They just collect transaction fees. They're optimizing for their transaction fees. So they want the listings that will pay them the best lifetime to stay on the platform. And a basic listing that doesn't really look special isn't gonna be what makes them money. But so my hack, we need to update our photos to include more stuff that people care about in a marketing polished sort of way. So we're gonna go through the listing here. I'm gonna show you kind of where we went wrong. And then just a few coats of paint and some staging props will make these photos pop and then when we relist this property, we're gonna do it the right way for the algorithm and get some bookings. Let's start with the listing. All right, everyone, let's get into this listing and go over some things that are wrong with this listing. I think that's probably an important thing. This is an old listing that we have deactivated. It's been since replaced by the proper listing because we're starting it from scratch. What I can show you immediately on this property is first off, I think the photos are terrible. That's why we're painting. These three photos at the top are pretty much the same design style that everybody has. Now from here, we don't show the amenities in the photos either. That's another thing that I think we do wrong. Typically we'll have pots and pans on the kitchen, like on the, on the stove and we'll show our coffee station and we'll show plates and cups and stuff on the table. And we'll show that this room has amenities, things that people can use. But as you can see here, we really don't have anything. So photos are the first problem. Like I said, we're going into changing those photos. Um, you'll see some of those later. And then another thing that we had a problem with with a lot of our properties is this amenities section. What happened was when Airbnb changed their algorithm over um, or changed their listing creation protocol a long time ago, they made it really easy to create listings. And a lot of the stuff started being things that you didn't have to enter. But by changing the way the listings got created, they started pushing data that hosts didn't list into the final version of the listing. So what would happen is, let's say this box was checked X for essentials like towels and bed sheets. Well, what would happen is if you didn't check this yourself, Airbnb would have a guest answer a survey when your reservation ended. And they'll say, did the person provide essentials or was there a pool or was there a cleaning products? Something like that. And so if you don't go to the amenities section and double check all these things, you might find that it says that there's no hair dryer. Like what? That's that's so odd. Completing this amenity section is gonna be one of the most important things that you can do for your listing. Also, I recommend that you edit rooms and spaces down here. These are things that will really help Airbnb think that your listing should be worth more money. So there is a full rundown of what you should be changing and completing in my webinar that I just completed. There's gonna to be tons of information on that over the next couple of weeks, because like I said, we did relist it for you guys to be able to enjoy. But the main things we're attacking is we're gonna change the photos because as you guys understand, this very first photo is your hero photo. And if 10 of our listings looked identical, people aren't gonna click 10 versions of the same listing. So we wanna give these listings some personality. And then the next four photos should be a collage that shows all the things that your place has, like your coffee station. Um, you should have um, the pots and pans on the kitchen counter. Um, you should have something else that's interesting in the next four photos. So if you have a pool, if you have a gym, anything like that, 
you want to collage the first five photos and then give them like photo number six through photo 20 could be a walkthrough like a traditional real estate format. This is the basics. Let's get back to the video. So first things first, we will want to paint the space. Now this is a very small apartment. We're talking, you know, 250, 300 square feet, maybe 350 square feet. This is basically a hotel in size, but it does have a full kitchen, which is nice. We don't have a couch or a love seat in here. We're actually missing a couple of things. We're missing some chairs for the table. There's a, a good amount of mismanagement on this property over the last six months, I will be honest. And so we need to restock some things. So we're gonna get this bad boy back to where it should be. But of course, like I said, painting takes time. So we're gonna do painting first because it's small, we need to paint to try to create separation of space to make the space look like it has spaces in the space. So the very back wall here by these windows, I'm going to paint that like a desaturated green. So that way I can put some decor in there, bounce off the blue chair and try to get an artistic photo because, you know, I love artistic photos right now. If you've seen any of my other stuff about listings lately, then this wall, we're going to paint a blue. And in my properties in Houston that you might have saw recently on TikTok or Instagram, I use this really dark blue called Anchors Away from Sherman Williams, but that's too dark for how small the space is. So in this case, I'm using one from Home Depot called Tidal, T-I-D-A-L. Not like the music thing that Jay-Z launched, but this type of blue, it's a little bit brighter, which will help with the space. Big spaces can use darker colors and it can really make these really cool artistic moody feels. But since the space is so tight, I don't know if I feel safe going super dark. So these first couple of listings, we're gonna use this more like medium blue. So that way it will hopefully look better on photos. I might even play with some patterns somewhere. Uh, we're gonna have some fun with it. So first I'm gonna move this furniture back, paint the trim and then use the rollers and just try to get a couple of walls done as fast as possible. And once we get some color on the walls, I'll go to a decor store and buy whatever decor I think is missing to really make this photo shoot pop. So ta-da, the green wall took exactly 23 minutes to paint. I took very little paint. We could probably do six to eight walls without how much paint we have in one gallon, which is nice. And I just used the trim brush the whole time because the wall was so small that even just doing the trim, I could fill in the spaces in between. But it gave me an idea. There's a brick wall right here that's all white. And I'm thinking of splatter painting the wall green and then taking select bricks and painting them entirely green. Let's just do that because even if it screws up, we can just paint the wall white again, right? So let's have some fun. It is an Airbnb after all. Next up, we're gonna paint this whole wall here blue. And by that time, this should be dry enough that I can peel back the plastic, put the chair down, and then we can go shopping for some stuff. I really think that with some like plants, fake plants, you know, the whole plants basket stuff I keep talking about, I think that could look really cool. So let's find out after we paint. And by the way, everything I'm doing here, plus everything I plan on doing with the listing, which I can't give you all of this in one video because the webinar I just did uh, is probably right around two hours long. I'm about to shoot that webinar in two days. And by the time you see this, it'll be a past event, but I am allowing you still to get that whole webinar. It is for sale through probably the next few months. That way you can get back on the algorithm the right way. That's called re-algorithm. It was my re-algorithm webinar. There'll be a link in the description that you can sign up to get that copy of the webinar. So go get it. Everything I'm doing here is preparatory stuff for when I create the new listing. That way it's as marketable as possible because the views are one of the most primary things that matter on your listing until you get bookings. Views matter until you get bookings, but then views still matter almost as much as bookings. So this is going to keep our click through high and that's what's important. So watch that webinar to get everything else. But yeah, let's get back to the video. So as you can see, the entire balance of the room changes when the walls are primarily dark instead of white. Now, this is going to, of course, affect what's in the space and how we want to place it and what other decor we want to buy. So tomorrow morning, we're going to go to at home and just buy a bunch of random decor to try to find what matches and then take some cool photos and get this thing listed. Tonight, I'm going to paint some other walls, different colors to see if there's any other like themes or designs that I like. And we're going to run with whatever looks the best. We're going to probably have a few different units of a few different kinds. But we're going to play with like purple and lilac and we're also going to play with like a really dark green and black. I'll show you some of that too by the end of this video. See you tomorrow morning. All right, everybody. Good morning. So we actually have to do shopping for a different unit this morning, but I'll catch you up. We did three themes in paint. We've done a green, we've done a blue and we've done a pink. And the green one has just come out 
good enough that we've been able to post the photos, get a booking, paint a second unit, and start that one as well. And with that said, when we did set these up, we did get enough basics like baskets and plants that the blue one is arguably able to get pulled off with very little decor, but the pink one, we've never bought anything to match it. We don't have anything on hand. So we're gonna go to at home, we're gonna buy maybe some more outlandish stuff, maybe, um, and get all three styles set up same day, hopefully. I do also have meetings today. I also have to do some housekeeping because we terminated our entire Austin team for quality control problems. And of course, I gotta be a YouTuber all at the same time. So I went to Epoch Coffee, I've got the coffee. Let's go. So I've got a couple photos of the pink room in my phone. Um, we're gonna go through at home and try to find things. Um, we're already missing a lampshade from one lamp, so I'm gonna steal this, but that reminds me, like, I should probably buy, like, a different lamp than the basic ones, since we're going for kind of, like, a, a louder, more in-your-face feel. We probably need a more loud and in-your-face bedside lamp. So let's start there. And like I said before, we're not designing entire rooms. We're just designing photos. So because of that, I'm buying a couple different lampshades, a couple different lamp bases, and I'm gonna push these around to different rooms and see if they can even fit in, like, a really cool way. We're just really doing a lot of trial and error here. Now I believe you can never go wrong with like too many plants. You can always find a way to fit them in the space. And I've been wanting to kind of do something with that archway, the corner, um, and actually like make a custom wall corner where it just lushes out. You know, maybe I'll just buy a bunch of this junk right here and see if I can build it just so you guys can laugh, if, if anything. Let's have fun. Now for this massive amount of greenery, I think I'm gonna need like a staple gun. What else is really gonna hold that stuff to the wall, right? So um, might need to do a Home Depot trip also. Now this is another big part for the room. The pops of pillow color can really make the space. Now the wall's already pink. Uh, we could buy um, a pink pillow just to play with it, but like a sky blue would really contrast off the purple and pink. Maybe even canary yellow or something like that could be wild. So we're gonna grab a few pillows and that way we'll find out when we get there what works because we can always use more pillows in other rooms. Another design thought is it's not just color that matters, but texture. If you can play with textures in a cool way, you can really bring out photos. So the pillows I got, some are flat, some are geometric patterns, some are like embroidered in a way and these textures will come out in the photos. This is something you should consider because using matching textures, like the fact that the pink room has diagonal lines, a geometric shape on the pillow might actually look congruent. It might, or it might contrast. <laughs> well, I'm not good enough to find out without putting it in front of a photo, so we'll find out when we get there. I'm really starting to get like hot on this yellow idea. I'm hoping I find like a gigantic tall canary yellow statue it would be the coolest thing. You know, there's kind of a hack in the design world. If you can't find what you're looking for, just go with black. Black creates contrast, looks luxury, it's fun. So um, I can't find anything yellow I like. I'm gonna go with this black thing. Oh, it won't fit? You think it won't fit? Oh, it won't fit, it won't fit. Watch, it's gonna fit, watch. We just gotta do what we gotta do sometimes. Let's go. So what do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, so this is one of the three different room designs that I did. One was completely green, two different shades of green. One is this blue and green theme. Another one is like the pink and purple, kind of like the moth stuff. I think that this quick trip to Austin to make what was once a blank white basic space suddenly more interesting. I think this was a success. This is going to help us because, you know, the Airbnb's algorithm is very touchy lately. I said that. And I guess I'm kind of rushing through the end of this video because tomorrow I'm doing my webinar. You're not going to see this in time, but tomorrow I'm doing a webinar on the algorithm. And about 500 and something of you are showing up and I don't want to screw up that webinar. So I'm going to make sure I get the slides together. If you want a copy of that webinar, I'm going to be be selling it after the fact. So there will be a link in the description of this video where you can get that to learn all about the Airbnb algorithm and its new updates and what you can do to stay to the front. This multiple design for identical listings is one of the things that we're doing to make sure that Airbnb helps distinguish our properties with people and helps us get a click-through rate where we can earn it with different personality types, different design preferences. And that way we don't have a few like listings that are identical to each other and they all just get buried because Airbnb's algorithm is looking at views. And if you have 10 of the same listing, you won't get as many views because people people won't need to click on all 10 of your listings. They've already seen it. So this is one of the things we're doing to start segregating our inventory into different looks. It's like a slick way to get more clicks. And then of course, 
Some people will like the blue and then some people will like the pink. We're trying to be different enough that we are not cannibalizing our own inventory. If you have questions about, you know, little design hacks, like on the cheap kind of stuff, this was maybe $400 a work. Um, the paint, the plants, the pillows, everything included. We pretty much renovated each unit for less than $400 each. So if you want more videos on design, cheap hacks to make your Airbnbs look cooler, I'll put it in the comments. We can have a conversation about it. Maybe I'll do an extra video. Thank you for watching this one, by the way, guys. I really do appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you on the other side.